Hello everybody. The deck with many names, 4 red, 1 black, red black midrange, or sometimes red with a splash of black, has been making some huge strides lately. Mago claimed the throne of We Play Agility, defeating Shauna in the finals, who also had the same deck, proving its strength and cementing it as a tier 1 archetype. A deck with many names, and none too particularly elegant, we will from now on be calling it Phantom Red, as it aptly mentions the two central aspects of it, being Phantom Assassin and a red deck. During We Play Agility, Mago showed exceptional skill in creating and piloting his decks, and his victory was well deserved. 4 to 1 ratio decks are quite rare. The only other deck we have seen thus far is Vin Kelsier's 4 blue plus Rix deck that he brought as one of his two for the tournament. The reason to play 4 to 1 is to retain the consistency of a monocolor deck while also including the power picks of a complementary color. Without further ado, let's get into the basics of Phantom Red. Mono Red has been a safe, solid deck to play recently. Both Red Heroes and Red Creeps work in tandem to put immense pressure on the opponent in the early game and close out explosively with Time of Triumph. The thing is, not all Red Heroes are built equal, and there are formidable fighters in other colors that would do well in a Mono Red strategy. Phantom Assassin is one of these heroes. Someone that can fight with the best, wields a killer signature, and brings with it all of the efficient removal of the black color. Here is the deck list that Mago took to the Wii Play Finals. The starting three heroes are Legion Commander, Bristleback, and Axe. There are two reasons that we start with Axe and not Phantom Assassin. First, if we start with Phantom Assassin, we would almost be forced to send subsequent red heroes to our lane to be able to cast cards, as we are still primarily a red deck. Second, if Phantom Assassin comes out on the turn, then you can put her in the left lane, which is where she probably goes anyways. This allows you to pressure the left lane with two heroes and possibly upkeep kill a hero in the mid or right lane with gank or pickoff. Yes, your early game just got that much better. This is where Phantom Assassin shines over other black heroes in her place. The closest replacements would be Lich or Sorla Khan. Even though they provide solid signatures, Lich's attack is too low to optimally utilize gank, and Sorla's health is too low to survive after using gank. The final hero in the lineup is Tidehunter. Kraken Shell was the primary reason he was included here in Mago's build. A free 3 initiative gaining cards for one hero is a good deal. In addition, his high health makes him hard to remove, and his active comes in handy plenty of times. Sure, Tidehunter is great, but he isn't set in stone. Mono Red has played around with Timbersaw, Beastmaster, and Centaur Warrunner in his place. They all serve their niche. Timbersaw gives you board control and defensive power, Beastmaster gives you an extra creep, stun, and removal, and Centaur Warrunner's signature gives you reach against the tower, which can sometimes be used to kill an opposing hero too. I would stick to the original hero lineup that Mago created and modify it once you feel comfortable. The game plan here is pretty much the same as Mono Red. Keep pressure applied with your units and use your cheap removal to be ahead on the board as much as you can. Try to have your opponent on the back foot the entire game and close out by casting Time of Triumph. Let's move on to some main deck cards. Generally, this deck favors killing two towers to win the game. However, you do have two red mist pillagers. Sometimes when your opponent is forced to abandon a lane, you can throw this creep in there to multiply and take the ancient, if your opponent does not react. Remember that red mist pillager is still a weakly statted creep, and can die to even prey on the weak hounds. No pun intended. Usually, you won't be playing it early if you have other options, but in the situations where you have to, wait for your opponent to use up their tower's mana so your pillager can hit the tower to multiply at least once. Now let's talk about what Swim considers the most underrated card in Artifact, Spot Weakness. There's a great video where he goes in-depth about the reasons why this card is an auto-include in red decks, and you should check it out for his insight. We will have a link in the description. To give a brief overview, Spot Weakness serves primarily as a cycle card, meaning it replaces itself after casting, with some added benefits. It has also slowly been replacing Smash Their Defenses as the primary draw engine for Mono Red, Red Green Ramp, and this deck. Nowadays, there are not that many improvements in the meta to justify running Smash Their Defenses. While it's true that when Smash hits an improvement, it gets the job done and replaces itself, but when there isn't any improvements to hit, it is just a dead card in your hand. Mago once said as a joke that the only reason he brought Spot Weakness was because Swim said it was good, but the real reason was that Mono Blue and Red Black Aggro were pretty much non-existent in the tournament, which are the decks that heavily feature improvements. Red Green does run Selimene's Favor and Unearthed Secrets, but that isn't enough for Smash to be justified. Demagicking Maul is other improvement removal that would probably be better suited to deal with it. Spot's piercing damage can come in quite handy against red decks. Since every single player in the top 16 ran at least one red deck, it probably wasn't too hard to extract value from Spot the Weakness. For example, Spot can allow your Bristleback to kill Legion Commander on the flop. Likewise, it can allow your melee creeps to kill Bronze Legionnaires and Stonehall Elites. 
Since Spock can be played on a hero of any color, Phantom Assassin can kill an axe and survive if it lines up with him on turn two. In the late game, when your opponent plays a Time of Triumph, Spock can help kill those intimidating heroes by just ignoring their armor. These reasons and many more is why both the piercing keyword and Spot weakness is so powerful. This deck also has one copy of Lodestone Demolition. Most of the time, this card is very underwhelming and not worth putting in. The reason Mago had it here is due to the prevalence of Time of Triumph in the tournament. Lodestone can push some serious damage in the late game, serving as a sort of mini Bolt of Damocles. At the minimum, against a red deck, when they play Time of Triumph on two heroes, you do 8 damage to the tower for 3 mana, and the damage only goes up from there. If you plan on facing many TOT decks, then Lodestone might be a serious consideration, otherwise Pickoff is an easy replacement. Keep in mind that Pickoff and Gank do not always have to be used to get upkeep kills, as Phantom Assassin sometimes might end up in lane 2 or 3. For example, if there's an opposing hero that would have 4 health or lower after the combat phase in lane 1, and you have a duel to do the remaining 4 damage outright, it might be better to hold it off until you have a pickoff. You can pick off them from lane 2 or 3, wherever your Phantom Assassin is, and this way you won't give your opponent an opportunity to heal their hero. Be aware of similar situations, because multi-lane cards can be overpowered if used correctly. The item deck is pretty standard and not anything too interesting. Stonehall cloaks are affordable thanks to your removal options early game. Phase boots are also handy to move your heroes in or out of trouble. Against Mono Blue, Phantom Red is favored thanks to its aggressive potential and the ability to remove heroes quickly. It also does quite well against Red Black and Black Blue Aggro, because it fights for the board and scales nicely into the late game. When it comes to playing against Mono Red, the matchup is much closer. You do have more removal, but they have more and bigger creeps like Marifal Brawlers. In this matchup, whoever takes control of the board quicker usually ends up winning. The hardest matchup will probably be Red-Green due to their potential of ramping and casting Time of Triumph faster than you. You need to aggressively pressure them since they can't deal with wide boards and use removal to keep heroes out on key turns. Try to not waste all of your removal in the early game. If you are afraid of Stars Align plus Time of Triumph, simply gank their green hero. This matchup is another reason why Mago teched in Lodestone Demolition, to deal that extra bit of unblocked damage to their tower. You could also include a Smash the Defenses or Demagicking Maul if you want additional hate or expect this matchup. And that's all we have to say about Phantom Red. Give it a try and let us know your versions of it. Give Mago a follow as well. He's an awesome player and one of this deck's best pilots. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.